Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that you guys had a great uh, weekend. I hope last week was successful and uh, was full of uh, benchmark benchmarks being uh, reached and goals being achieved and all of that good stuff. Uh, if it wasn't, press the reset button. This is a new day, this is a new week, this is a new opportunity. Uh, don't get bogged down in what goes wrong. The best person fails forward. What does that mean? That means that there's no such thing as failure is not an option. You're going to fail at something. You're not going to hit goals. That's going to be um, something that happens in your life. The thing is, are you applying yourself at a level and an intensity and a consistency that even when you fail, you fail forward? See, if you fail forward, you might not hit the goal, whatever the goal is, let's use numbers. Let's say your goal is $5,000 uh, for the next week or whatever. And that week, this week, you don't only hit 3,500. Well, you went from zero to 3,500. You failed forward. You got 3,500. You didn't get the five, uh, but you got the uh, 3,500. One of the problems we have is we don't see that progress in our failures and so we only celebrate those few moments in which we actually see something that we really really set out to get happen the thing is most of the things we achieve in life we achieve through incremental progression in other words there's not this quantum leap that jumps you from one place to another on a consistent basis it happens in life when you really truly build momentum when you are really truly mentally focused when you're really truly operating through the power of manifestation through vision all of these things can happen but the the truth of the matter is when you are looking at it on the surface it's hard work it's perseverance it's consistency it's moving towards something even when it doesn't feel like it's happening you don't relent you don't give up you don't fold you simply walk into it because you know it's for you Okay, so I just want to encourage you on that. I'm going to get to that in, in, in more in depth in a moment. But I want to remind you that if you check the description box, you're going to see that we're still doing the 30-day challenge. If you are uh, frustrated with where you're at in the, uh, pursuing your goals, you're frustrated in the stagnancy that you're experiencing, you're frustrated in the fact that you know there's some things you could be doing better and you don't know where to start. You need to get a, a jump start to this change you want to experience in your life. The 30 day challenge is it. It's something I created for the purpose of allowing people who may not on a regular basis be able to work with me primarily because of financial reasons this is an opportunity to do so anybody who is really truly serious about change can do this so definitely go to the description box click that link learn more about the 30-day challenge go to the site enroll in it and let's get you started also check out some of the other resources there some of the new books we are already to, to book number 22 uh, and that in and of itself is a testimony to the power of visualization. How you see yourself has so much power. Now I want to talk to you real briefly about uh, three primary benefits of visualization. Uh, first and foremost, let me talk to you about visualization. When, when, when uh, The average person, when they hear the term visualization, they start thinking somebody's head's in the cloud. You know, uh, one thing that we tend to do and we need to stop doing is that when our children reach the age of about five, six years old, it's time to go to kindergarten and first grade. We start squeezing their imagination. We start telling them to get their heads out of the clouds. We start telling them that's not realistic. We start developing our own idea of what they are capable of what they will become based on our limitations, what we've accepted in our minds about our lives, what we have allowed the world to impress upon us and the expectations that we have on our lives. We refuse to unleash them with, with unbridled 
ideas and expectations for themselves because we, in our mind, think we are protecting them from disappointment and frustration. The truth of the matter is you're going to be disappointed in life no matter how covered and 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 coddled you've been. You're going to experience a certain level of frustration no matter how coddled you've been. The thing is that imagination is what will allow them to see beyond the current. If you don't have the ability to see something that does not already exist, you are doomed to live in what does. And if you are living in an environment or a reality that is not what you desire for yourself and deep down you know it's not what you were meant to be and meant to do, you're going to have to be able to see something outside of what you already experienced. The problem is the vast majority of people in this world are living off of memories of the past and the limitations associated with them. They are living on coming out of poverty. They are living on broken relationships. They're living on substance abuse. They're living on the memories of what they've experienced and they've never ever taken time to examine the possibilities of what lies ahead. You don't have to repeat the past. It's good to understand the past. It's good to know about the past. It's good to sit up and say, okay, I want to keep this, but this isn't something I never want to do again. There are some things you want to repeat. There are some things you don't. It's good to take away, but you've got to have an imagination. You've got to set in your mind this thing that you see you the bible tells you over and over again for those of you who are um really subject to scripture um uh, and those who aren't i i'm going to talk to you too but those who are subject to scripture you're told that the weapons of your warfare are carnal you're told that they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. It said, it's casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing what every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What, what is it saying? It's saying that your thoughts have power. And well, if your thoughts have power, your thoughts, your thoughts are the seeds to your destiny. Uh, I've said that on many occasions. Your thoughts are literally the seeds to your destiny. What are you thinking? How are you thinking? Not what are you going through? Because what are you going through is temporary. See, your spirit, it, it knows something. But if you consistently flood your soul with memories of the past, it weighs you down and anchors you in the past. And you consistently repeat something. You've got to see something beyond what you're currently experiencing. And here's the thing. You've got to see it at a level that it produces the emotion that will be present if you are actually living in it. And there's a way of visualizing on that level. There's a way of quieting your space and spending some time thinking about what it is you know you want to become, what it is you know you want to do, what it is you know you want to feel and be and become. See, you it's what about it's it's always about what you're willing to become. You don't get what you want, you get who you are. So if you don't have what you want, you need to become somebody who's capable of having it. If you you're never going to have let's talk about money. You're never going to have a million dollars unless you win the lotto. And then if you don't still have the mindset of a millionaire, you'll lose it. That's why so many people who win the lottery end up broke again. Why? Because they had the money, but they didn't have the mindset. The mindset without the money will still find the money. It's that simple. Now, the process is what most people get bogged, bogged down in or what most people balk on. Most people balk on the process. Most people get to a point and they sit up and say, well, I, I, I visualized it and I, I thought about it and I tried to manifest it and it didn't happen. See, the thing is we live in a microwave society. We live in a society where we want everything to happen now and we've been told that it should happen now. We sit up and we get on social media and we see all these people talking about how successful they are, showing you their houses, their cars, showing you how they made this amount of money this way talking about them and never ever sharing with you the journey that it took to get there if they really truly are successful there's a journey that's a story behind their glory there is a time of failure a time of delay a time of disappointment a time of really truly having to grind it out that they haven't shared with you so you get this idea that if it doesn't happen overnight it's not meant for me see no um, no good thing will be with hell. No good thing shall be imp impossible. There's nothing that is impossible with God. That's what we're taught, right? Well, then 
why is it that so many of us never ever see anything beyond the hurt, the pain, the frustration, the difficulty? It's because we haven't learned to use our minds in which the way God told us. We're told in Habakkuk to write the vision, make it plain. We're, we're told to guard our minds and our hearts. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, we, we've got to learn what's going on. And the heart is the subconscious. The heart is the part of your life that runs about 96% of what you do, what you become, what you live. Everything is governed by the subconscious. So what are we programming the subconscious with? The failures of the past? The expectations of the past, the limitations of the past, or are we talking about something different? Let's talk about visualization and why it's important. And I'm going to give you three benefits. And I want to focus on the second benefit, but I'm going to give you three benefits of visualization. At some point, all of the things, at some point in the past, all the things now that we take for granted, cell phones, lighting, uh, central air conditioning, all of that was considered impossible. It wasn't even fathomable. Riding in an airplane, traveling around the world at unbelievable speeds in, in a metal device with thousands of pounds of luggage and several other hundred human beings all on board at the same time and we're flying through that that was at one point considered impossible a matter of fact when orville and wilbur wright started talking about it people told them they were crazy you know how many people who have produced realities that once were considered impossible well, i want to talk about one specifically and uh, up until 1954 you heard me share this before i'm gonna share it again up until 1954 uh the belief was that you could not run a mile in under four minutes. It was impossible. That was the belief. Nobody had ever done it and it was considered impossible. But they doubled down on the negative belief about this particular benchmark. The belief not only was that you could not run a mile in under four minutes, but that if some kind of way you miraculously did run the mile in four minutes, you would never live to celebrate it because you would die. Your heart would literally explode from the exertion. So I wonder how many people were actually on pace to run it, realized they were on pace to run it, and the fear of dying stopped them. But that's, that's, that's neither here nor that because we'll never know. Here's what we do know. In 1954, Roger Bannister ran the mile in under four minutes. Now, here's the unbelievable part. When people ask him what he did differently, when people ask him how did he train for it, Roger said, I ran the race under three minutes a thousand times in my mind. So the, by the time I stepped on the track today, I had already run the mile in under three minutes 1,000 times. Whether Roger totally understood the power of visual, visualization or not, he had practiced it. He had allowed his imagination to create a reality of something that had not yet been done, but he believed it could. And that's the thing. He believed it could. He imagined that he had done it. And here's the beautiful part about it. The mind does not have the capacity to distinguish between what is being imagined and what is really happening. Now, here's a question to you before I move forward. How many of you are imagining the wrong things? How many of you are giving time and energy to the negative, the, 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 the wrong, the, the heavy, and that's creating your reality? You're allowing your current situation or your past experiences to dictate your thought processes and you're perpetuating the very thing you don't want. One of the things we learn when we talk about visualization, we talk about the power of manifestation, when we talk about the law of attraction, one of the things we talk about is that you don't focus on what you don't want, you focus on what you want. When you focus on what you don't want, you give what you don't want power. You end up manifesting the very thing you don't want. Focus on what you want. I, you've got to learn to look beyond the situation and the circumstances. One of the things that people have often ask me it's like when i when i've been at my wit's end when i've been in some of the worst situations that you can imagine when i was at my lowest people would look at me and they would see a smile 
people would look at me and I was still serving the people and they would ask me, how is it that you're going through this and you have the audacity to smile? Are you in denial? I'm like, no, I know what's going on. I know where I'm at, but see, I'm not living in this moment. I'm operating in this moment. I'm living in my destiny. I'm living in the future of what will come. I'm living at a point when I finally met my wife and I'm married. I'm living at a point when my business is actually producing a profit. I'm living at a point when I'm supporting my, not only myself, but my family. I'm seeing what the manifestation of me falling and coming out of. See, the thing is, People are so afraid to fall that they don't take steps. They don't walk out into the vision. They, they, they don't take steps. They, they, they're sitting there hoping and wishing. They want someone to lay this clear cut path where there's no risk. And so they sit there and they wait and they never move. So you got to step out into the vision. You got to step out to the shadows of what you know is out there without having a clear visual path. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. See, you're looking at what's seen and you're missing the point of faith and operation in its totality. You're sitting up and you're waiting for a path to be laid from you instead of blazing the path yourself. That's what Roger Bannister did. Now check this out though. Check this out. After Roger Bannister ran the mile in under four minutes in 1952, over the next two years, somewhere close to like 200 or something people or more ran it. By 1972, several thousand people have ran it, over 20,000 people uh, plus. Now, uh, we're at a point now where high school students run the mile in under four minutes. Something that was once uh, deemed impossible has become common ground. And it was because somebody envisioned it. They, they literally didn't change their training. They simply saw themselves doing it to the point Here's another thing I'm going to tell you about visualization. That was a study done some years ago. Uh, and they, had, they took basketball players who were struggling with their free throws. They split them in half. One half shot 1,000 free throws a day with a free throw coach, with a shooting coach, and worked on their form, worked on their technique, worked on all of that. The other uh, group wasn't even allowed to pick up a b basketball over the course of this study. They were simply taken into a room and for a couple hours a day, they envisioned themselves shooting the ball perfectly and the ball going in every time. When it was over, the, the group that had not practiced physically at all, but simply visualized it, performed significantly better than the ones who had been shooting. Why? Because they saw themselves shooting perfectly every time. The other group was while they were trying to get better was seeing themselves miss a lot more than they made. And it sank in and it became a psychological block. You've got to be careful. Envision it. Sit down. Spend some time with yourself. Spend some time with God. Allow God to pull back the veils of, of your current reality to show you the possibilities of your tomorrow. Use your imagination. Unbridle it. Unleash it and create. Now let's talk about the benefits of visualization. The first thing is I find when people come to me, I find when people come to me, one of the first problems we have is ambiguity. This, this ambiguous idea of what they want. You ask them what they want and they aren't clear. They aren't clear with what they want. They know they want something better. If it's financial, you could tell them, you know, I, I, I want to be financially successful. What does that look like? They don't know. It's just they just know it's got to be better than where it is. That's a problem. You need clarity in your vision. You need clarity in your expectations. You need something that when you hit it, you know you've hit it because it's so clearly implanted in your mind and on your paper and on your wall. Wherever you've written it down, you can go to it and say, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And then you can have it. Let me tell you something. You've got to have the clarity. That's the first thing that visualization does. It allows you to go into a place and, and, and get into a space where you start to pick out the, the nebulous in, in, in implements and elements that, that are clouding your idea of what you want in life. Because if you don't know what you want, it's hard to hit it. You can have this, imagine your destiny is on this wall. Look at the wall closest to you now. And the picture, nothing on it. It's just a big space. Now, picture a target or a uh, bullseye 
the size of a quarter on that wall. That's your destiny. So you know how focused you have to be to hit that? Do you think you can hit that, 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 that bullseye if you don't even know where it's at? You can't even see it because there's so much else on the wall. You can't even see where the bullseye is. Do you think, what are your chances of actually hitting it? Your soul knows what it wants, but it needs to be experienced from a visual perspective. So what do you need to do? You need to visualize what you want. You need to go into it. And see, we've been almost shamed into a state of embarrassment when it comes to visualization that's not being realistic that's not man all this stuff going on in my life i ain't got time to be be daydreaming well that daydreaming is what separates you know daniel daydreamed david daydreamed you talk about all these past heroes they saw something beyond what they were living in and then they walked into it Abraham saw himself being a father of many nations. Had to walk into it. When nothing there said it was real, he had to walk into it. And that's what this imagination does. That's God gave you an imagination for a reason. Why? Imagination took you outside of the confines of your current reality and showed you the ability to explore the realities that be, live beyond it, that, that exist beyond it, to be able to start the manifestation process. So the first benefit is clarity. Oh, now benefit number two is the ability to clarify the energy you've surrounded your vision and your goal or your expectation with. That's where a lot of people lose right there in the energy they surrounded around this vision. There are a lot of people who have visions of a better life. There are a lot of people who have visions of great relationships, visions of unbelievable success in what they do. Here's the problem. They surrounded it with negative energy. Sometimes and most of the time, a lot of that energy comes from themselves. They've got this idea of what they want, but all they can see is what they're going through. All they can see is where they're buried at now, and they don't see the power of walking out of that situation. And so they sit up and they look at it and go, but man, that's probably not true. You see people talk. I get them all the time. People come in, Doc, I want to do this. So what does that look like for you? Well, you know, I, I don't really want, you know, they start to tame it. They tame the vision before they ever start to pursue it. They have it in their mind and they see it. But the moment they have to talk about it, the moment they have to examine it and explore it, they start to tame it. Why? Because the idea of achieving it is something that doesn't align with where they're at and where they've been. And they don't understand the power they have to walk out of yesterday into tomorrow and live a completely different life. So they, what they, they, they start to tame their vision to be more in alignment with what they are so that, first of all, they can reconcile it. And they also don't want anybody else to say, man, that's crazy. You ain't never did. You know, and that's the other part that it allows you. It allows you to see the negative energy you have surrounding it coming from other people. You know, there are some people out there that will literally make it their life's work to tell you why you can't do something. There are some people out there who have made careers out of finding everything wrong with other people's visions. And you have to be able to identify those people and extract them from your periphery. You need to take them out. It doesn't mean that you can't love them, but you got to learn how to love them at a distance. Why? Because their very presence is bringing you down. There are some people you love with your life. So, some people that you may have brought into this world or as a man created and, 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 and are literally a see that don't have the right energy for you. You've got to learn how to love them at a distance. Why? Because because once you brought them to adulthood, you've given them everything you have. And they don't have a right to come in and suck the life out of what you are becoming still. Because they have chosen not to take what you've given them and do something with it. You've got to also be able to push those people who want to consistently remind you of what you used to be. Who you used to be. With the, some of the poor decisions you made in the past. you got to sit up and say, I'm not that person anymore. And anybody that's focused on reminding me of what I used to be can't truly embrace what I'm becoming 
becoming and I've got to separate myself from that and I've got to walk into who I truly am. See, that's what life is. Life is a continuum of personal evolution. You're not supposed to be who you used to be and you don't have to hang on to it. So many of us are hanging on to what we used to be with such vigor that we can never even embrace what we are capable of becoming. That's what visualization does. It allows you to sit up and see that energy. It allows you to grab hold uh, 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 of the things that are positive. You know, um, Mary and my wife posted uh, uh, a, a passage out of Philippians, says, whatever things are noble, whatever things are pure, whatever things are, are praiseworthy, whatever things are of good report. And he's talking, meditate on these things, whatever things are are uplifting whatever things are inspiring meditate on these things meditate on the things that extract you from the deepest and the darkest parts of your current situation meditate on the is study telling you this mind thing that you're in that you're engaged in this thinking thing this mind thing is where a great deal of change in your life will take place a great deal of performance is dealt around this i tell people all the time if you want to be good in business, it's 20% planning and strategy and 80% psychology. How you see yourself, what you expect of yourself, what you believe about yourself, and how you will engage the world will have a much more lasting and powerful impact than what you know. I have seen people with not, not with, 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 Average business plans outperform people with some of the most unbelievably extravagant business plans solely because their mind was on right. I'm not saying that you don't need a good business plan. I'm saying it works so much better when you know who you are, when you are prepared to do the things that you know you're capable of doing. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. So that's the second thing. You've got to clarify what you want. That's one of the benefits. Then you got to clarify the energy you have surrounding your vision. Some of the times, like I said, and then I'm moving on to three and I'm done. A great deal of the negative energy we have around our vision is coming from ourselves because we're still trying to see our vision through the lens of our failures in the past, through the lens of our hardships in the past, through the lens of what we used to do and where we've been instead of where we're going and what we're capable of. We're not seeing the true nature of the design that God has given us, that there is something exceptional, extraordinary, and phenomenal in our very makeup, that we are literally genetically predisposed to success when we pull back the blinders of our disappointing past and start to see the un, uh, un, unescapable, unparalleled, uh, unparalleled light of what's possible in the future. You've got to understand that you cannot be anchored by your past because you're living in the archives of what has already happened and you are totally missing the opportunity to create something completely different. You are by the very nature in being in the image of God, a creator. You have the ability to call things that are not as though they were and literally bring them into reality. But not when you're focusing on what you used to be, what you used to do how horrible this was and how horrible that was. Ain't nothing like a victim's mentality to anchor you in failure. Finally, it will allow you to set your path. Again, we talked about this a moment ago. Now you can see that target on the wall. It's, it's the size of a quarter, but you see it and you know it's gonna be some shifts as you travel towards it, it's not going to be a straight path. Whoever told you the, the journey to success was a straight path misled you. It's, it's winding, it's turning, it's getting, but when you have a fixation, when you have a mental compass of where you're going, you will get knocked off. It's going to happen. You cannot circumvent the vicissitudes and challenges and disappointments of life. They are coming. It's not in the circumvention of those challenges. It's in the ability to refocus yourself, to restabilize yourself, to recenter yourself. Take another look at the destination, that target on the wall, your destiny, and walk into it. That's how it's done. 
Stop settling. Stop letting people talk you out of this greater version of yourself. Stop allowing people to remind you of what you used to be. Stop allowing people to point you in directions they think you need to go into because that's where their limitations have them anchored. I'm challenging you to stand up and walk into your destiny. Again, don't forget, if you haven't signed up for the 30-day challenge, this is the time. Let's, let's start preparing right now to end this year on a strong note. 2020 has taken us on a ride. But I'm challenging you and telling you that we can still turn this into a very powerful and unending, I mean, a, a very powerful and productive and profitable year. On that note, I'm stepping out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. God bless. Live your life on full. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.